Um, all right. So Jen and I thought we would talk to you about a few um, AI things that are to do with historical stuff and give you a bit of an intro to Jess. So she works for the city of Subiaco, which is um, – does anyone know where Subiaco is? Yes. It's just up a bit of a bit of Burton, yeah. That's correct, yes. So in she runs city, their – yeah, so inner city you'd call it. Um, so she runs the museum for them there along with a few other things, I think. I only just met her yesterday, but we've we've found her through our partnership with AMAGA WA, which is the Australian Museums and Galleries Association of Western Australia, who are a member of the over, the Australian grant uh, Australian um, overarching um, and association. And the member. Yes, they are. Uh, the WA branch have, have hobbled together a, an organisation called the Motherboard, and it's building on what we did in Be Connected in our last round. So, teaching digital mentors to help build capacity in uh, museums and galleries throughout Western Australia. And we touched in the territory as well because they were finding that a lot of uh, their not for profit and community run museums we're struggling with volunteers because, as we know, the volunteers are ageing. Uh, the younger ones aren't wanting to come up, and mm. particularly when it's historical, uh, there's not the interest. You've got to get to a certain age, I think, before it actually you start. You sit back and you go, oh, shit, I better pay attention to what my mum and dad have said <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> that's important stuff. So I think they were really finding it tough to find and engage new members. But there's also a big push to digitise collections and that's where Nat has sort of joined with us to say this is exactly what we need to build confidence and competence among their, their existing volunteers and try and encourage the future seniors that Alex calls them to come in and, and be part of it as well. So Jess will be talking to us about what sort of things we need to look at for digitising collections and how you can um, make them the best that they can be and all of that sort of stuff. So that'll be really exciting as well as suggesting maybe knocking on the door of your local museums if they're volunteer run and seeing that might be a good source of new members for you to sort of go and partner up with them because they're looking for digital literacy skills in their volunteers and you're looking for people to bolster your numbers in your organisations. So it might be a, a partnership made in heaven post-COVID. Do you know Good what I mean? To, yeah. Time. So hold hands and play nicely is my ethos. So, <laughs> But uh, in, in the lead up, Jen and I have been talking about a few AI things because it's in the news a fair bit at the moment. And I just downloaded an app uh, yesterday that is it's on a free week trial, but I thought I'd show you some stuff. So I'm just going to try because I can't share my iPad screen. So this is the app. It's called Remini. Oh, I'm going to try and hold it very carefully. Right. Can you – that's my great, great – no, my great – my dad's grandfather, so my great-grandfather and grandmother. So watch, can you see what's happening when I move the slider along? Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, oh, that's – oops. See how it um, improves the quality? Mm. Yes. So AI is fixing that image for me. There you but go. Gimp, <laughs> has anyone used GIMP in the past to enhance GIMP. photos? Yeah. 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 Beats that. That's it's that. just a slider. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll show you some no that I used earlier on my screen. Yeah, you just slide the thing across uh, and it does it. So, so these are my. Also on, um, also on uh, my yeah. heritage. Barry's been using one on my heritage. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm on my, I'm on my heritage. Mm, um, I am too. I'm, yeah. I'm updating my family tree. Um, my wife passed away about seven weeks ago, and I'm oh, my family's oh, asked me if I would um, start to work on the family tree. So, oh. yeah, as if I've got nothing else to do. Of you course. Know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So the, these are some of the old photos that I've got in the family archives. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so this one of my grandma's probably the best one to show you. 
because I did this the other day. Can you see the detail in her face? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, there's a bit of blur up around her hair still and, I mean, the lattice but There's a really shadow nice there, you know, that you can't remove shadows. Yeah, it's not, it's it is not like perfect, this. but um, this one is my uncle and a friend of the families that stayed with them when, because her mum got, um, she had a, a bad car accident. This is back in the 50s when the street photographers were out around oh, her I city. Oh, I recognise it. So, was, it. was that taken yeah. in Forest Place? Yeah, I think so, right in front of the post office. Everyone's got a photo yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find one of my dad as a little little boy with my grandma pushing the pram and he was had that real cheeky little, it was a gorgeous photo, but I just can't find it anywhere. So um, this one is, this fellow here is my grandfather. I'm not fussed on this one because it's a little bit, it's not real great. See how it smoothed out the faces and it's a bit sort of, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't like it as blemishes. much. But. Yeah, you have to remember yeah. too that the the black and white cameras back in that era did not have a great yeah. resolution in them, that's, and, no, and that's actually can improve them a little bit, but they are never as good as the modern no. Uh, no, no. modern and resolution. That's, that our, even know, our that's the starting that. point. You can't improve the starting point, really. That's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah. So, so this one came up beautifully. This is the this is the original one. My dad and my uncle have taken photos of all of these, but now I've just got to go back into the library and find where that one is. I've just done a as whole. As if she's style got of them. nothing better to do as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, my son tells me I've got time between two and three a.m. Yep. I can relate to that. That's that one that I've just done. Yeah, that, that's come up really well. It has. Yeah. So, yeah it's, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, all of the things that we can we can get AI to do for us. Um, I've also, we, who's heard the new Beatles song? I, I never thought heard. I'd be saying that in 2023. <laughs> And then this article, I thought we'd uh, have a look at. Who saw that headline today? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. What do we think about that? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't think so either, but you never know. I reckon about half and half. half. Yeah. I've, I, I went um, to um, a local government uh, convention a few weeks in September. <coughs> Maybe it was October. But anyway, um, they had a, a guest presenter there for almost two hours who spoke on AI, and um, and it just seems to me that um, what it's capable of doing is so really good and would save a lot of jobs and people having to do past research, and it comes up with potential that you can then vet, tweak, Refine, personalise, but it does the hard yards for you. I mean, I, I just, in, sorry. In that respect, I think a lot of people might, could be put out of jobs, but then they could be more gainfully in, engaged instead of having to do all that background grunt work and let mm. it do it. I mean, I know you go into a <laughs> McDonald's these days and you've got to self order on one of their stupid machines. Um, which is always out of paper. And so you still got to go up to the counter and make your order anyway. Um, a same with the um, self-checkout places at supermarkets. Um, oh, yes, it'll do away with all the staff, but you still need the staff there. Um, mm. As you say, they're probably employed in doing slightly different things. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 30 years ago, um, by today, we we're going to have a paperless society. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> So, they use more paper than ever. <laughs> well, that's right. Um, and and um, <laughs> my wife used to say, you know, they'll never have a paperless society until they fix what they need in the bathroom. Um, exactly, exactly. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a card-carrying sceptic uh, when it comes to stuff like this. Um, yeah. my, my son still comes to me to ask me problems about his computer rather than the other way around. Um, and so I think that our generation does have a lot to offer 
Um, and, but I don't think that the younger generation really appreciate the skills that the older generation have. Um, I do remember my son saying to me a couple of years ago, you know, Dad, he said, the older I got, the smarter you were. Which I took, to be a, I took that to be a compliment yeah, um, yeah. because all of the things I tried to tell him is, yeah, yeah, Dad, she'll be right, you know. And now he's finding out that, um, you know, perhaps Dad wasn't so stupid after all. Mm. <laughs> it goes in a way, doesn't it? It, it does, but yeah. When they're little, it's like, oh, you know everything, Mum and Dad, and then teenage years and the early yeah. 20s. Like my two were trying to tell me the other week in Perth, when I was driving them around, oh, mum, you got to do this, you've got to do that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, thanks, guys. I taught you both how to drive and I was yes. driving in the city before yeah. you two were even around. It's not my favourite thing to do, but I can still do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're funny, aren't they? Oh, so smart. I'm waiting for that yeah. period when they become, when they realise that we are smarter than <laughs> that yeah. we look. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Uh, you know, my son uh, has advice to his two daughters. Uh, you want to know something? There's this magic tool called Google. Mm. Um, but they know how to use that these days. So, yeah. Of course, of course, of course, yes. And, yeah. and, but I'll tell you what, they still do the same things because I'm here with my elder son and his family and they've got two kids, a girl and a boy, 15 and 16. And... Um, I look at their rooms this morning and I thought, will I be a nice nan and tidy their rooms? And I thought, no, I won't. No, no, exactly their right. their yeah. parents had to tidy their rooms. And I tell you what, if their parents had rooms like they were left this morning, they'd be in deep trouble. A but friend, of mine, friend, a friend of mine told his daughter. They're walking around like this all the yeah. time. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, told his daughter to go and clean a room. Um, and he said, you've got 10 minutes. And so she sat there watching TV. After 10 minutes, he just got up without saying a word, went to the kitchen, got a big green garbage bag, uh, went in, uh, just slid across the dressing table, all of the glassware, everything into the bag, threw all of the clothes in it and started to walk out of a room. Where are you going with that, Dad? Oh, out to the incinerator. Yeah. <laughs> Next time he asked, she went straight in. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Apologi apologies for joining your meeting later. No, no that's problem. fine. We've just no been problem. sharing a few things about AI, photo edits, and um, talking about and whether AI is going to take over all of the jobs. Yeah, like whether it will take Elon over everything. Suggested. Yeah, exactly. So, I, Jess, we've I got... Think there'll still be, I think there'll still be quite a few um, manual manual tasks or quite a few things that need that pe that person um, Agree. To, you know, to review or to quality control, all of those mm, kind of things. Yeah, so, for sure, for sure. Um, so um, just if you're ready, we're happy yeah. for you to hit the ground we're running because I know that you're for on me. a tight timeline. So, That's yeah, fine. We're That's fine. fine. We're fine. Uh, um, so I... Hello, everyone. Um, I guess Natika said, uh, might have said that I was joining. Um, and I'm the coordinator of the Subiaco Museum. I've got my nice little bit of collection work behind me um, here in the museum so that you guys can uh, see what we're working on, I guess, or see that what a museum looks like. Um, and I was um, kind of asked to talk to you about um, some of the projects that we've been working on at the museum and some of the things that you might, with your skills, um, might be able to do if you reach out to your local heritage centres or um, museums, historical centres, whatever, um, or even if you've got your own archives or your own uh, collections that you need some help with or not help with, some um, some direction for what to do with them. So I do have um, some, uh, the presentation that I did for Sue for last week, which was in regards to the Digitisation Centre of Western Australia. They helped with a number of our collection projects, digitising them. But I might maybe, if I can, I probably can share my screen. I might yeah. just show you, is it okay if I show you kind of the end product of yeah. what we're trying to do with our sure. museum? Yes, um, yes, sure. And then 
um, that's kind of jumping the gun a little bit, but it's to show you what you can do um, and how I've been able to get volunteers and uh, interns or help to be able to do it because I don't know if you know about small museums. I've probably, wherever you've been, you've been to giant museums. They have similar problems to us. They just have bigger problems. But small museums are, you know, limited FTE, volunteer run, um, you know, people that just have a passion and an interest that want to help out. Um, some of them are funded like we are with a city council or um, state government but a lot of them are purely passion projects. Um, so we do what we can with limited resources, but one of the best resources we've got is people who are probably like yourselves with a little bit of digital skills and a little bit of, um, of a passion and time as well, because everything takes time. So I'm going to see if it will let me share my screen. Just so this is this here. is um this is collections WA, which is um what Amaga the the Australian and Museums Galleries Association have built for Western Australia, and the idea behind it that is that all of these, as I scroll down, you'll see there's historical societies, there's grammar schools, heritage centres, big museums, small museums, um can have a kind of one stop place to put their collections online um, and have people be able to find them just searching through Google. So a lot of these museums probably don't have their own external website or with their collection online on their website so they can put their items on here. You can see we've got libraries, excuse me, we've got libraries, we've got government, we've got museums, communities, historical societies, um, and the Subiaco Museum. So we started with a goal of putting 50 items online. Um, now, when I started, our items it's were... It's telling me, uh, yes. Pardon? The recording has started, yes. Oh, okay. sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, that was someone else joining. I'll just mute. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, when when I started, we had about 7,000 records in the collection, but none of them were online. Uh, and because of the size of the museum, the majority were not on public display at any one time. This gives us the opportunity to have our collections online. People can use them and research them um, and see what we've got, even if it's not available to come and view in person. Um, and so at the moment, we've got 4,000 records that are online. The goal was originally, as I said, 100 records. We've been able to get so many more online because of volunteers, because of people with skill sets that, um, that you probably have as well. So everything, um, not everything, but I've set up sub collections now because we have so many things online. But I'll go in here to start off with. These are some of the photo collection. We've got two and a half, what's that, two, six uh, photos online. There are about 5,000 photos in the collection, so we're about half done. But all of these needed to be scanned or photographed or records edited, um, someone with a bit of skill set, set of a database. Um, a lot of our records also, if I show you, just that one doesn't have two two photos. I need something that's got a photo on the back. Here we go, this will do. Um, we also, I don't know if you know about how kind of museums, especially in, in Australia, Western Australia started, they started with, I'm sorry, I think I've got one behind me, very manual, um, very manual registers that were um, given an assigned an, an item would be assigned a number and you would write a description, maybe draw um, an example of it and any information about the date and the donor. That all had to be transcribed into a collect into a, um, a some form of database. And when ours got transcribed, we only had two digit years. So if I click to this photo here, all of these had to be renumbered. Everything had to go from a P9, P85 to, an, to actually the full year, which is 1985 or whatever it 
be. They only realised they had a problem when they got to 2000s um, <laughs> and they had double zeros. So um, we're not the only collection to have this issue. There's another example. Um, that's actually got three numbers. That's got an A number. But in order to get these online, we had to have somebody physically rename them, uh, renumber them, excuse me. We had to have someone digitally renumber them um and then also scan them and did and and renumber the digital scan so you can see quite a long process quite labor intensive um there you go there's one with a number an old number on the front of it written in pen <laughs> which which we don't do anymore um but that's just for those purely the 2000 photos that we've got online um that was almost a two-year project with volunteers, with interns, with any staff uh, as well that were that were working on not working on other projects. Um, please stop me. I, I I tend to talk a lot. Uh, <laughs> please stop me whenever you've got questions. Um, I can't see if you raise your hand because I've got my screen my other screen up. But just just jump on and stop me or Natika if you want to. Stop me, sure. um, please yeah. do. No worries. Um, so, trying to get these on here, as I said, it, it required a lot of a lot of help, and um, some of them also we needed to outsource, which was why I spoke about the Digitisation Centre of Western Australia. These ones here, for example, needed to we needed to outsource the digitisation. It's hard to see from there, but. That's actually on board. You can kind of see in those top corners. Um, and because of the type of scanner we have here at the museum, we were unable to do that in-house. Um, and we had the digitisation centre do it. However, we, what we could have done, uh, that one might have been done as well. What we could have done yeah, was have someone photograph them. So that, again, may be something that um we didn't have the time for the staff time for uh, but that could be something if you've got those skills you could offer to um to a museum or historical society listen i know how to use use um you know to take good object photos i can come in and set up a studio kind of thing and take photos of things so and i can show you so that's what was done with this but just we outsourced it now I can show you also one of the things that we've been working on with in particular the photo records is this. Oh wow. And wow. I actually have someone who is remotely geotagging all of my records because they collections WA, unlike my other database that we use here at the city um, or the museum. The Collections WA is purely online, which means I can give somebody the login details and the procedure of what to do. And then they have been going and they have been geotagging all of my records, I'm not sure they're my, all of the museum records. And so now if I zoom in, this is currently where I am where I am sitting in the municipal gardens or what was the municipal gardens. Um, and this is the war memorial that is out on the corner of Subiaco, um, of, of Subiaco, of the gardens, uh, less than 500 metres away from where I am. That's the bowling green again, the same thing. So we've had someone be able to go and geotag all of these records. It means if I'm looking for what I, I lived in this house on Hammersley Road, I want to know what it looked like. Oh, look, actually somebody from, um, and as, as you can see here, that's also from a different collection. That's from the Army Museum, somebody who probably lived in that house. So it's a way for people to see all the collections online, um, well, not all, a large percentage of the collections yeah. online. There are, on Collections WA, there's 170-something organisations, 172 organisations, I think, um, and about 75,000 records. 
Um, obviously, as you can see, not as many geotagged records. Um, but there's also Vic Collections, which is the, that was the pilot program for Amaga, and they're about five years ahead of us. So there's something like a thousand um, organisations on Vic Collections. I don't know, where are you from? I think I saw New South Wales on somebody, on Newcastle. Yeah, with the majority of our participants are in New South Wales. New South Wales, and yeah. Jenny, who's usually in Walpole, is actually in Melbourne today. So Fantastic. So yeah. I believe there is New South Wales collections as well, but I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's... I'll Google. It, I'll do a if, quick Google. If, yeah, have a quick Google. Under Amaga, it's probably... collect. Yeah, there's probably collections New South Wales. Yeah, there, I'm sure there is. Um, so these are the kind of things that we have been working on. Um, and a lot of the things, a lot of the volunteers that I had when I started don't didn't have the skill set to do to or, or didn't know how to use a scanner, didn't know um, or how to um, how to digitally renumber something if it had already been scanned, um, how to link records and things like that. So they were some of the earliest things that I started doing was teaching um, the volunteers how to use the scanner because they could use it without um, without me being here if they knew knew how to do it kind of thing and they could just scan the records and I could link them later. So there's some costumes we've got. Um, this one here is super simple. That and small museums, we do everything quite, well, not quite simply, um, if you've got a little bit of um, imagination, uh, you can do a set up a photography studio with five meters of um, white fabric or a white sheet um, and mannequin kind of thing. So we've done, we didn't use um, the white sheet for these ones, but these photos here, that is uh, a tripod, a camera, and a white sheet or a piece of that's actually, I think those photos were actually away all the distractions it, that's correct that is correct i think these ones were the white sheet in fact um and then the others we moved on to um we got a kind of reflective white glass plate kind of thing um but exactly takes away all the distractions there you go that is a white sheet um that's a gramophone, our gramophone and it's just draped up the back and up the sides. You don't get a horizon line if you do it, if you do that. Um, and that's just setting up as simple as setting up a tripod um, and taking some photos. We've then taken the camera off the tripod for these details of the item. But all of these things take time. That's a white sheet, I can tell, because it's not as clear in the background. Mm -hmm. um, but there's nothing wrong with that photo and I could in fact probably show you I could probably find some old photos and you could see how bad they could be so I could probably share some of mine that I've just been chucking through a new AI app yeah exactly here you go there's one instead you could put that on a mannequin yeah mm. So that would have been done in the 80s. Oh, that's 1990, 1988 number. So it was probably done in 1988. And it was probably done with a, we find a lot of the, of the film, we found a lot of film, like printed film photos of our objects. So likely um, that they were photographed with, um, with a film camera kind of thing. So these ones will probably be the same. There you go. These are the old photos, and you can see that was that that photo there, That's which was done in the 80s probably. The same dress I pulled up a moment ago. That's not such a bad idea for people who want to sell stuff on Gumtree or eBay, putting yeah. that um, yes. white sheet at the back. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Because yeah. uh, sometimes you see stuff on eBay and you think to yourself, oh, yeah. Uh, and I've recently been doing some stuff myself, but I'll, you've just given me a tip. Mm. Okay. 
Well, yep. we teach that way uh, um, in our classes there that when they're taking photos to uh, put up on Gumtree or yeah. Marketplace and so forth mm. to make sure they mm. take out any of the distractions by putting in a, a sheet and yeah. uh, putting their object yeah. on there. Yeah. That way. Yeah, that's no, correct. Good, good idea. And and I think you would find like if you're teaching that to some of your classes um, or some of your your volunteers, um, you a lot of the small museums and collections might not know that, and they've just taken a photo that they've done it on their phone as quickly as possible. Even phones these days are good enough. Um, but it's the it's the white background or it's the things like we also have photos that have a scale guide so um that is what we want in the museum i think i've removed a lot of them because we don't have them in pub on public record but i can but there's also using an iphone you know there's certain um, tips and tricks in yep. you know, keeping your elbows to your side so that it's rigid if you haven't got a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we teach all, well, teach all of those kind of skills to our um, our staff for taking <coughs> photos. Um, but, you know, they're, they're things that you don't think of straight away um, unless you're taught that. Uh, and so all of those kind of things, what file format should you save it in? Um, what kind of naming conventions should you have? What's the best for archiving? We do everything um, as a TIFF and then convert it and link a smaller photo to as a JPEG. Um, and then for that's the same for we don't do objects as raw anymore from the camera. Um, just because that is such a huge file, we just do a very high res JPEG. So it's still a big file. It's just not as big as the raw. And then for our audios, we do a WAV file and then we do a WAV file and then link up a link up an MP3. So these are mp3 recordings here and you can sit and listen to that you don't need to but um yeah so yeah so that's some of the things that i would recommend if you're interested in getting reaching out to um kind of your your local heritage museums and and collections and talk to them if you know those things they're um that's what they're they're sorely missing they're sorely missing um people that have the ability to take photos to scan and be able to renumber the file or rename the file following their conventions um things like as i said the geotagging of records online you can do that if you know how to drop a pin on google and find the um the geolocation or the latitude longitude that's all you need to be able to geotag records and you could reach out to collections from, you know, even from WA and say, I want to help out. Um, and especially for us, a lot of our records, they will say things like 17 Robinson Street in, in Subiaco. So or you don't even have to really read the record to figure out where it is because it's in the title. So, and I know there's lots of um, the, the records online that I like that. So. Yeah, Can I just ask one question? Yeah. Please. Two? Um, normally in my, when I'm home, I live in Walpole and um, I am the secretary and project officer of the Walpole Nornalup mm -hmm. Districts Historical Society mm -hmm. and I'm also a project officer because we're about to get our first museum. We're the first town in the Shire of Manjimut that doesn't, the only town, town yeah. in the Shire of Manjimut that doesn't have a museum. So our town hall was um, dismantled from the Shannon Mill, piece mm. by piece, put on the back of a truck in 1972, driven to Walpole and reconstructed. And we found some little sheds in a compound mm. that actually came from the Shannon Mill as well. So we've engaged a builder who is specialist in relocating old buildings and there's three of these sheds and they're He's drawn up plans and um, very soon we're going to 
hit up Lower East West for some grant funds yeah. to relocate them and have them put um, in together as a museum right next to the town hall. So the Historical Society uh, has been in existence for 30 years and we have a really great um, photographic curator and he has an excellent camera and he's taken lots of photos mm -hmm. um, of donations uh, mm -hmm. that come in because everybody, you know, when there's a death in a family, people just <laughs> chuck all the old stuff in an old suitcase and leave it at the front doorstep of yeah. um, the Historical Society. Yeah. Um, and without a museum, you know, things get pretty tight. Mm. So what we've done, we've turned the, our little sort of room off the side of the town hall the, into a bit of an office and we're a little bit of a mini museum. But mm -hmm. there's people who've got uh, larger items in their sheds at home. So once we get the museum up mm. and running, we'll be able to pull those in and put them on mm. display. I can remember at the Resource Centre when I was manager for 20 years as a project because we partnered with the Historical Society. We took all their hard copy photos and we scanned them at high resolution in TIFF, mm. as you mm. said, and we submitted mm. them to the Batty Library. Mm. So now I'm asking, do you draw from the Batty Library for yours? Are they one and the same? Are they connected or are they separate entities? Um, so we don't always draw from the library, we, uh, the Batty Library. We do and we don't. So there's, um, it's a bit of a two-way street in that with certain things we also then offer the Batty Library a copy, um, in particular the oral histories. So all of our oral histories, um, the cassette end of life is 2025, VHS 20 A is 2025 as well. So we are currently if they're not done already, digitising all the oral history cassettes. The originals should already be in the Batty. If they're not in the Batty, we are sending them to the Batty. Um, that is one of their collecting fields. On the other side, the, the Batty or the State Library have um, huge photo collections, including some fantastic photos of Subiaco that we don't have in our collection. So what we have done is we have purchased them with um, uh, with limited copyrights and added them to our collection because we want to be able to, um, to use them for certain things. In particular, the museum building that I'm in currently is 100 years old at the moment, just turned 100 this year, uh, and we didn't have Photo, some photos of the interior because um, it, it used to be an electrical substation. The, the State Library, the Batty Library had photos of the interior. So we purchased them to be able to use them for exhibitions, reproductions, also to showcase us, um, our building on the city's website. So it's kind of a two-way street. We purchase stuff from them, but we also give them stuff. Um, we have a famous family, the Newman family, um, who lived in Subiaco as well as Fremantle and their son Jack died in 1917 um, on the Somme and he wrote letters back to his three sisters and mother all the time. We gave those letters to the State Library because they are a state importance, the Newman family are in terms of Newman up north as well. So there's, again, I'd say a bit of a go-between. Um, so for your collection, you probably want to look at what you've got in the collection that they might need um, for state records, the same as um, historical society. We started as, as a historical society. We got every PNC minutes that we that in the city. We're not a repository for PNC minutes. We don't have the capacity to store them and look after them. So they've gone to the state records office now um, because we we don't have that that capacity and we'll never be able to digitise them and research from them. So. It's you've got to look at what are you um, and what should go elsewhere. So I would suggest if you're if you're being inundated with collections as a historical society and there's stuff that is of state importance, it should go to the Batty or State Records or for the rest of you in New South Wales that a similar thing to your state library or your state records office. Um, yeah, or the National Archives as well. If a lot of the stuff got moved from um, Perth no longer, or Western Australia no longer has a National Archives repository here. Everything got centralised to, um, to Canberra. 
So yep. a couple of years back. You also there mentioned, goes. I took some notes as you were talking. You also <laughs> mentioned grants. Have a look at um, uh, the chart grants. If Nat from Amaga hasn't spoken to you yet, um, chart grants are for regional and rural communities uh, and for collections and organisations. So I'm not able to apply for them, but if I was to come down and do a talk or do something down in Warpole, you can, so there's, you, you can apply. So, um, and that's for Thanks. historical societies as well as local governments, as well as community organisations. Um, and then the other one was um, Amaga have a similar, uh, oh no, Amaga is chart grants. Heritage Council have grants and they, they will open in January. Um, if you don't want to go through a big Lotteries West grant, but you might need more money than they'll offer because they offer up to 20000 I think it is. Um, and the Lotteries West might be your way to go. The Amaga can help you somewhat with your grant applications if you need. Just reach out to them. Uh, they might be able to to direct you as to what's required, um, because I know that they are time consuming and hard if you're volunteer run. Um, and what else did I, what else did I write? Storage, storage. Um, your storage, your for your items. Um, you can get a while. I don't know what you've got down there, but you you said if you only got one small shed, is that right, or one small room for your storage? Room at the moment, yes, yes. Yeah, and mainly paper and digital record. I make mainly paper no. and. No, objects. we've got mastheads from the Mandalay. That's oh. coming of ground. We've got the lot. Half a ship, Lady Walpole, dinghies, you name yeah. it. We've got it. Okay, anything that might be of. Um, like state importance, even you don't want to like you don't want to send it somewhere else. You want to keep it in your collection. There are significant. There are some other grants, and I've got to remember where they are. And they are for um, items of uh, state significance. So I might have to send them send them through to you when I remember where they are. But we, I know we used one because we have there's there was one item that was. Um, professionally conserved because of its value to um yeah to to the state or yeah. to or nationally um so just yeah have a look well, into those had, things uh, we had a very um conscientious curator of um a researcher mm. and she went back on the pioneering records mm. and um put together posters um, in the hard copy and she had meticulous writing and she did yeah. them all up and they were really good for displays for open house or you mm. know events or something but time marches on and you can't keep them rolled up under a desk somewhere forever which yeah. Judy certainly knows so um, I took it upon myself a couple of years ago stupid stupid because I haven't finished yet mm. I've done seven though and um, I scanned the photos or the curator of mm. photography gave me the um, scans if he had them and then I converted it all to separate PowerPoint slides um, and then I converted it to DVD and mm. it now runs at the visitor centre and I've looped all of them together. So mm. quite often the visitors who come to town have got no yeah. idea about the history of the place and how hard it was, you know, living for two years in a tent in the mm. forest. Um, where it rains in the cold, months. wet forest. It rains for ten months of the year and drips off the trees for the other two. That's um, correct. Yep. So now mm. visitors have got a better concept of what it was mm. like. Yes. Yeah. One one other thing, because you mentioned someone had scanned a lot of things. Have a look at um, if you guys are also talking to your heritage centres, historical societies, or whatever. Have a look about where they save their files. So we want multiple backups. We are lucky in that a lot of our stuff. We've also we have a subfolder within the city that no one can access but the museum staff and and IT, I guess. But they know, um, which means that's our master preservation file that's where all the master tiffs go that's where all the master wa uh, wave files go um so that they don't get moved they don't get touched they don't get um renamed or anything like that um and 
that's backed up in multiple other locations. But you might be working off um, hard drives and you might want a master hard drive and a small and a second hard drive or something like that. So just have a think, make sure it's backed up in at least two locations. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, Jess. Does anyone else have any other questions for Jess? I'll say. About, yeah, go, Judy. Hi, Jessica. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if we wanted to start up our own small museum, mm -hmm. and we're, uh, we're in Sydney, yeah, and, and real estate's damn expensive, mm -hmm. how... How do we do it? <laughs> we have, I'll, I'll tell you for what we've got. We've what got are you collecting? Beg your pardon? What are you collecting? That's the important we're, thing. We're collecting all different digital devices. Mm -hmm. We've got like older computers, new yeah. computers, and we want to also display future AI and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff yep. as well, as far as computers go. What is our what's our stepping stone <laughs> i'd start with some form of online collection take all your photo like track them give them a number if you go onto the um amaga website and go under i'm gonna go with education or training or something like that there are or resources maybe there are some resources that you can download um, including how to go about cataloging. So what kind of information you want to track for, for them, the size, the numbering, um, the, the condition, the color, all of that. Um, and I'd start recording them, even just in an Excel, whatever. You don't need a fancy collection management system, just some something digital, don't do it paper, <laughs> something digital. Um, and then, I, then I'd put it, I'd find a way to put it online and then you'll be able to hopefully, um, yeah, I guess hopefully start a museum. You can look at grants for things like that, um, but your real estate or your building will be hard. You might be able to speak to some of the other, them, them, there might be schools, universities that are, um, that focus heavily on digital tech and stuff like that, that want you to, that will offer you a room or something like that. Um, but I can't say I have actually I've started museum collections from scratch, but I've never had to find a building before. So that's um, that's something I'm not too too familiar around. But when I have had to start collecting from scratch or start a museum collection from scratch, I have reached out to um, people who are connected to that that um, building or that the history of the building or whatever, and called for donations and then just started cataloging based on there all the photographs there are all the books there all the whatever um yeah judy has already started an online museum there you go i don't remember well the url well just so you just need it. you just need to somehow link it to trove or whatever did you natika did you find a new south wales collections no, I couldn't find it. Yeah. I've got state archives collection and yeah. museum collections. So. Yeah, I might ask. I I'll might ask. put the link in the chat though if you want to yeah. have a look at that, Jude, um, okay. for the New South Wales one. And then, um, and then this one, I'm going to send you this link. This is the resources link, and there's some collection management stuff. There's um, how to small museums cataloging how to store and digitise, all of that kind of stuff. Um, the one thing we are very careful with with our, our digital tech is the lithium batteries and the, what's the other type of batteries? Because they can catch fire. Yes. And when so they we, start burning, they do not and, stop. That's correct. And especially if you've then got, so we've got all these photographs that catch, yeah. we've got lots of Super 8s, we've got lots of um, film reels and things like that. And the second that they go, everything goes. So um, just be very careful. We store, yeah, so old phones we store separately. Um, uh, lithium batteries, and I can't remember what the other thing is. There's about three that are in old tech. So how do you store, like you, you store them separately or, or you... 
we we store them so they are stored they've been removed from the object and they are in um like fire safe boxes yep um in in a separate room that is um yeah. colder colder storage or climate storage so that the heat fluctuation doesn't change um and that just means that if they go up none of the uh, they're they're off they're yeah kind of separated yeah, separate. um, yeah, yeah. okay I've so done. just so worth have... just worth thinking about that as yeah. um a, yeah. as a digital tech museum yeah yeah okay great great information thanks Teek. i've got that i've got that good good so go and get them out of your garage with those batteries Judy. oh god if mm. i could <laughs> it it the one thing if you if you i don't know what you're how you're numbering them but if you're um if you're taking the battery out so here's this isn't a, this isn't the best example because i don't have a battery this has a number so does this even if they're stored together, um, I, they've both got separate numbers so that if I happen to take this out and put it somewhere else, um, I, I can still relate it back to the other things. So if How you've got you your know? batteries out, make sure you number them as well. But the number is the same or is it got an A after it? Like, how do you know what? We, we do A and B. Yeah. Um, we, we do A and B. Uh, some people do it differently. Uh, but yeah, we do A and B. So uh, if you go onto the resources link, there is a small museums collection cataloging manual, and that will give you some examples of numbering. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to drop out as well. We it's twelve o'clock here in Perth, and the museum's about to open. So I'm really sorry. If you've got you, more too. questions, please send them um, through, and I will do my best to answer them by email. Thanks, that Jess. Was I'll, um, Thank I'll so put much. the yeah, I'll put the um, Amiga link in there yeah. for the national one as well Fantastic. for everyone. So yeah, Fantastic. great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jess. Jess much okay. appreciated. Bye. Uh, Bye. So yeah, so Amiga is the um, actual national peak body. So Jess is a member of the West Australian one, but Amiga is the overarching that has nationally. Um, so I think each of the state and territory based associations are a member of the national one and then they all look after each of their own. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Do, do you know if each state has a collections as well or just WI? Well, that's what Jess was saying that Victoria was the first one. So they're about five, oh, yeah. they were the pilot. And so then WA's jumped on board, but I couldn't find the New South Wales one. When I looked up for New South Wales collections that came up with debt collectors, so go figure. Uh, uh, Natika, Natika yes. I just found MGNSW, so uh, Museums and Galleries, mgnsw.org.au. Try that. Oh, try that. Because Collections WA is quite different to the rest it's the actual museums and galleries, lights on, doors, open place. Oh, yeah. I've got that. I've just gone in there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and this I might be their Amiga WA equivalent, the, and that's just their URL. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It said but something about a stipend for voluntary uh, for yeah. uh, museums. Oh, just yeah. running through. I mean, it just, I just thought it might be a good partnership yeah. for clubs that are struggling with membership you know it might be a nice thing to say hey have you got anyone who wants to participate in our training and yeah. you know might have a good feeder for you all so in that um, part that goes across the top judy uh the the um, banner lights on doors open stipend program supporting volunteer oh, yes. museums yeah. in new south Wales. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that caught my eye yeah, I'll yeah. put that link in there for you too, Judith, Excellent. if you need it. Excellent. But it is a good idea as far as um, um, establishing new volunteers, if you like, for yes. our own computer clubs um, yeah. by exchanging our knowledge uh, and, and enhancing their technical yes. knowledge for, um, for you sure. know, their work with their, uh, their collections. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm. 
you got well, I mean since we've had the partnership it's just gone ahead in leaps and bounds, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has. And it just ticks over, you know, from time to time. We participated in their Get Online Week activities um, on uh, on one of their ones that was online and Nat and I sort of just bounce around ideas each time and we're doing more digital mentor training. So anyone that missed out in the round eight can jump into our round nine stuff. So that's really handy for us to have another avenue to feed into us for um, our capacity building projects that we we're halfway through for this current round so I've uh, put the travel bag away for a little bit and uh, I'll look at starting up again in February I think and sort of seeing where where I'm needed to go face to face but yeah it's good um anyone else got anything further to add about digitizing collections Except our um, Lake Macquarie, it's Lake Macquarie Library that's run, opened the new library out at, um, out at um, yeah, at Cameron Park. Cameron Park. They yeah. took West Walls in, which is an old mining centre of Lake Macquarie. They took their collection and put it into a room at the library, and they have the historical society people that are um, yeah, involved they used, in they used to have a room at the school. Yeah, so they come in every Wednesday. There was so much on display they had to um, look at what needed, what they could really put on display and take the uh, the elements that they felt were more um, in line with what they were trying to promote for the time mm -hmm. and then put the stories with them. It's set up really well. And our niece goes out there um, on her day off I don't know how many, whether it's every week or every couple of weeks, and she um, just um, works on the computer to uh, do more digis, mm. digitization just, um, to help them out. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's a good um, link with a library. It works out really mm. well. Yeah. Mm. Um, thank you. That's good. Anyone else? I've, going back to our AI stuff, I just wanted to share that I, I bumped one of my um, ChatGPT uh, accounts up to the paid version this week to do some stuff okay. that it couldn't quite manage to do for me. But one of the things that it has been able to do, when you know when you're putting stuff on your website and trying to make sure you're as accessible as possible and you try and put descriptions in, your alt text for images, Shall yep. I show you what this one can do? Aska, Aska has deemed it um, um, mandatory for us to be totally accessible and we do alt text on all photos. So that's why Teek's gone down this track. <laughs> Wait for it. So I've just dragged and dropped some of those old photos that I was working on before into it and said create alt text for these images. Every now and then she throws up a bit of a, like, I can't do that. I can't help you with that. <laughs> but there we go. Unbelievable. How oh. good is that? <laughs> oh. I, I was like, oh, my goodness, that is so worth the 20 bucks a month. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just trying to, and they're beautiful descriptions too. Yes. They're, you know, they're not like I sit there and I go, Jenny's wearing glasses and has short <laughs> hair and has a black shirt yeah. on. <laughs> you can say that every, every time, only just Yeah, like. just about. So you're easy, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> so but that's you can... GPT and that's the paid version, is yes, it? Yes, that's GPT-4. Yep. So. All right. Does anyone else have anything Ooh. further that they'd like to chat about? Ralph, you've managed to hear us okay now. <laughs> Sorry, say again. You, you're getting the audio <laughs> through okay now. <laughs> oh yes, it's um, very it's still good. very garbled. It's not as good as Zoom yeah. on my on my uh, computer. Are you on a PC, Ralph? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Oh, I thought most of my issues were um because I'm on a Mac, but anyway. Well, <laughs> one thing we did find the. Um, the Beatles song coming through on Apple Music yeah, was very, it was disjointed. 
Yes. Oh, was it? Yeah, 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 it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah, that's I wonder if that's to do with the digital rights management and stuff. I like wonder that, too. So. <laughs> we've, we've got the title of it, so at least we can go on YouTube. Yeah. And so if you, uh, if you have the yeah. subscription for your Apple Music, you'll be able to listen to it in its entirety. But Jude, you said it's on YouTube, did you? Yeah, I, I yeah. Listened, to, listened to it this morning on YouTube and it was the, exactly the same as what you showed me. Yeah, like oh, showed right. me. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was that YouTube one and came loud and clear, you know, uh -huh. four minutes yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Really, really yeah. Beautiful. One thing in talking about Zoom and Teams, one thing I've found um, is the fact that Teams uses up more bandwidth when you're on Wi Fi. Mm. Well, it does for me anyway. And it yeah. goes back to the days when we had Jerry and Pam and being there who used to do the digital um, support for the conferences. And, um, yeah, so I almost put my um, laptop on hardwired it into the router for the conference, yeah. uh, for the AGM, just to be sure. I yeah. didn't, and it survived, but sometimes it is a bit yeah. dodgy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's something for you all to think about yeah. moving yeah. forward. So. Mm. Um, I, say, I was going to say thank you for Get Online Week. We were in a very noisy place and we hadn't realised it was going to be quite as noisy because we thought we Get Online Week, your event, and then we had, um, I think it was DigiPals or one Writer Pals or something, one of those was Writer Pals, I think, going yeah. afterwards. And so we thought, oh, we'll go there to that place, which was the club, at Lambton, yeah. and we will do that over in the corner. But we hadn't realised that the bowlers were there and they were making a lot of noise over lunch. So. And there is no yeah. way I could blow up those long balloons. You didn't get it in the end? No. It was a oh. great idea when I first had it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we took them to Sydney and they've, they have a pump down there. The kids thought they were great. So oh, that's <laughs> amazing. I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough foof to be able to blow them up. There was no way in the world. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. No, I think it's the trick is you've good. got to get the rubber warm and just keep moving it around oh, and then I was just doing blow that, that. Blow I was that little that. bubble up first and then that lets it go out <laughs> further. So right. I don't, I've, I've, I've seen the, the pros do it and I've, I've, I've practiced it, but it didn't work. It didn't work. work. <laughs> well, I'm still on my desk, but it's it's burst. The dog must oh, have got dear. it or the cat it's must sad. have got it. It's sad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, very good. All right. Oh, good. Thanks ever That's so much, them. everyone. That yes, was um, you. Thank you. That was that really ended up being really interesting, I thought. Yes. Uh, now, uh, Natika, I don't have an option to be able to share screen. Is that because you didn't permit uh, it? I can yeah, so you're not I as a presenter, but I can I can bump you up as a presenter. No, no, well, I, I didn't I didn't particularly want to, but I was, while uh, the things were happening, I was going through and exploring all of the options and so forth because I'm not all that familiar with Teams, and I I thought, well, I'll have a look and see what's available, and yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it, look, I'm I'm getting there with it. It's like Zoom's still my comfort zone. On Zoom, I could have shared my iPad. But this one I, I couldn't, um, but I haven't practised with it enough. And, look, there were a few issues. There are a few issues with the recurring webinar series. Everything I read says that, no, you can't do a recurring webinar. So clearly we have done it, but not I don't know how or why. Anyway, so there will be a new link for the next month's one coming out in the not-too-distant future. So hopefully. I must say I like the um, fact that the backgrounds that doesn't, you, ghost as much. doesn't ghost with the two people. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that is a good point, yes. So, yeah, with, um, uh, with Zoom, that was quite a problem, but um, yes. with the teams that got it uh, sorted a bit better yeah. on that particular aspect. So, so with this, we have a, like a speaker coach option that I've turned on in here. So there'll be a review of the this how I've spoken etc for me at the end of this and I've just I was back on zoom for some um some of my business clients the other day and they have an AI assistant in there now and you can turn that on and if you skip off to the toilet while it's happening you can ask it to catch you up and it gives you a rundown and then at the end of the the session it will email you a summary of what was discussed 
Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. So it's interesting where it's all heading, isn't it? Yes, so it is. you can actually sit there and not pay any attention and then get it. Get I can it go to sleep, up. can I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> catch it up on an email at the end uh, of it. So, yeah, apparently. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, very good. Well, well thank you all for your company. I need to scoot. Thanks for hanging around bit. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So right. next month we've got somebody coming to speak to us from um, my aged care. So whether it's oh. from the WA branch or from I think they've seen my email signature and gone Kananara right Pilbara Kimberley and so we've got someone from the WA Country Health Service who's trying to find someone who can speak to us about my aged care. So cross your fingers that we find someone and. Um, That'll be from a perspective of how to step people through my aged care. So, yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't it reviewed is. the uh, recording of the meeting where Alex was on the um, giving his spiel. Yeah, we might pull him in once every two or three months, I think, because he's always interesting to hear. He's a great supporter. That have him back in a heartbeat. Yeah, no, <laughs> but yeah, so yes. He kept us on your toes. Yeah. Hate this. yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, folks, I'm all off right. to my to next appointment. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thanks very much, we're, everyone. We're yeah. Enjoy, and, your uh, Enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.